Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a labor and delivery story video, which um, I knew was gonna be my next video because I just had a baby three weeks ago. I'm three weeks postpartum, and this is my second time around. So I'm gonna share with you guys, you know, kind of what this time was and how it was different from the last time, and um, also just some postpartum updates. And also I'm going to show you my son, Isaiah. He's right here sleeping next to me. So. so this is my second baby, so my second time around. It was a little bit different. There are some differences and there are some similarities. So um, I had my son on July 6th, 2017, Isaiah. My first son, Oliver, was born January 3rd, 2014. So Oliver is three and a half years old. With Isaiah, I started, and it was similar with Oliver as well, but I started having just gets really uncomfortable towards the end. So I was 39 weeks exactly when I had Isaiah. Uh, with Oliver, I had to be induced at 37 weeks. I will link that video down below. Um, my water broke or I had a leak and so they had to induce me to prevent infection. That was kind of the situation with that. So I had him at 37 weeks. Isaiah, I had at 39 weeks, but I started kind of having contractions and um, a lot of just it was it was basically false labor and I went into the doctor you know probably two or three times thinking I was in labor um, because I was having regular contractions but then they would die down so I went in with contractions on let's see July 4th July 3rd so on the 2nd July 2nd I was having contractions but they weren't progressing and they couldn't induce me because I wasn't 39 weeks yet and they have a policy about inducing before 39 weeks so they couldn't do that and I really wouldn't have not, I wanted to progress naturally if possible so that wasn't really my preference but I was having contractions I live 45 minutes away from the hospital so on July 4th I was in bed all day and then I had an appointment on the 5th so my appointment was at two o'clock. I went to my appointment. I was pretty, I was feeling better on that day. I was a little bit more active in the sense that I was kind of like cleaning up around the house. I wasn't like in bed. So I go into my appointment that day. He checks and I'm dilated three centimeters. And he said, hey, you know what? You've been in several times. You kind of have had contractions on and off and you're dilated three centimeters. So, you know, if you don't progress before tomorrow, you're 39 weeks tomorrow, I can induce you if you would like. And we kind of went over what that would entail and, you know, Pitocin and all that stuff. And I, I said, you know what? I have been just having contractions a lot, laboring, I feel like all week. And so if I don't progress before tomorrow, then maybe we should do that. So I went to go make my appointment for that and I was kind of hoping that something would happen that night because I just I just had a feeling like I was in bed on July 4th just not feeling good at all and getting contractions but nothing consistent and it was just kind of I just was like oh I really hope tonight something happens so I'm driving home for my appointment I'm like I had been driving for maybe 10 minutes and I'm like I get a contraction and I'm like okay and then I get another one so I actually I was driving for about five minutes and by the time I was 15 minutes from the hospital I got three contractions so I was getting one every five minutes and they weren't like super painful at this point but I almost feel like I have to hold my breath or something it like kind of knocks the wind out of me and so I was getting these while I was driving so I pulled over and I called Byron. Byron was like knee deep in a work project. <laughs> and I was like, I think I'm getting contractions. He's like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I might turn back around to be honest and just go get some food and time the contractions. And if they keep going, then I'm just going to go back to the doctor. And um, so I, he's like, okay, um, I'm working on this project, but if something happens, keep me posted. So I turn back around and I go get some food and I start eating my food and timing them and they're every six minutes, but they're not progressing. They're not getting particularly painful. They're not, you know, they're, they're doing the same thing they, they've been doing, which is that they're every six minutes, but I'm like, maybe they're gonna go away. I was a little concerned that I would drive 45 minutes home and then it was right around traffic time. So I would get home and they would progress and then I couldn't, I would be stuck in traffic. That was like my fear. I was gonna have a baby on the freeway. So <laughs> called my doctor and just let him know. He's like, you know what, just come on in and we'll admit you. And he's like, if nothing progresses before, you know, it was around five o'clock at this time, he said, we'll just keep you until midnight and then we'll induce you at midnight. And I was like, all right. 
So I go and they admit me and I get in the bed and the contractions start getting stronger and stronger. So at around like seven or eight o'clock, they were like, they were, I mean, with Oliver, if you watch my labor and delivery story, they offered me an epidural when they started me on Pitocin. And I took the epidural because I think the anesthesiologist was getting ready to go on lunch or something for two hours or something. They were like, he's going to be gone for two hours. So if you want an epidural, you might want to get it now. So I got it before I really started feeling significant pain. With this time, the contractions were getting really strong. I was uh, in a lot of pain. I was crying. <laughs> um, I, was sh I was shaking. I was like holding on to Byron for dear life. There are some people who really don't describe it as particularly painful and those people to me are freaking rock stars because it was painful, you know, and, and they would get, it was like, for me it was like waves. So it would like start and I didn't know how powerful they were going to be. Sometimes they weren't as, sometimes I could handle it. Sometimes they were so strong, so long and so powerful, at least it felt that I just I was like, I can't, I just, I was like, give me the juice. So I told Byron, I was like, you got to go out there. And um, I was holding on to him, just like shaking and like tears were rolling down my eyes. I was trying really hard to be strong, but they hurt, you know, in my opinion, they hurt. So I told Byron to go and get the nurse. And I said, I would like an epidural. They came in the epidural for me, same with Oliver. It is no more painful than, um, when they put the IV in you, to be honest. So the epidural is never really an issue. I didn't get nauseous. Well, I got a little nauseous this time around, but they didn't end up giving me anti-nausea medicine. It's really quick. And then, you know, you start to get warm in your legs and you start to obviously not feel your contractions anymore. I still felt my contractions a tiny, tiny bit in my chest. Like I said, um, they would still kind of, they were mild. They were really mild. Um, and then they started picking up right as soon as I got my epidural, they picked up super hardcore because you could see on the screen and they were going faster and stronger and my labor was really progressing. Some people with epidurals, it actually can slow down their labor. But in my case, it, it's like my body relaxed and it was like time to go full speed ahead. So after I got my epidural, things really picked up and were going really quick, but it was mild for me. So I was like, I'm going to take a nap before I have to start pushing. And um, at that point, I think I was dilated six or seven centimeters and I decided to take a nap and I took a nap. <laughs> Byron turned on friends for me, same as last time. I took a nap and same as last time, I woke up to them saying, we're going to check you. And then they checked me and they're like, you're fully dilated. It's time to start pushing. So I got a good nap in right before I had to start pushing. So things really went a lot quicker this time than with Oliver because with Oliver, I was pushing for a long time. So I started pushing. I did three pushes. I was like, oh, two, three. And they were like, okay, we're just gonna wait a second to keep pushing, just give it a second. And they like waited and then they're like, okay, so now we can start pushing again. I pushed three more times, one, two, and then boom, Isaiah was out and they put him on my chest. With Oliver, they took him away and bathed him and cleaned him up a little bit, but they changed their policy to, um, they can't do that for four hours. So they just put him right on me. I started feeding him and that was that. And so, I mean, looking back at it, it went really smooth and it was, I was happy that they didn't have to induce me. They didn't have to give me any Pitocin. Obviously I did get an epidural. The epidural went really smooth. I haven't really had any problems with my epidural. Um, you know, in my case, the epidural helped. I was able to take a nap. I only had to push a total of six times. My body was able to calm down and relax a little bit. And then it really sped up the process. So for me, it was a positive experience. You know, obviously everybody's situation is totally different and what everybody chooses to do is totally different. So, um, that was that. The first few weeks postpartum are rough because, you know, I mean, in, in some cases, obviously you're, you'll hear cases where people are like, it was great for me, you know, it was smooth sailing. And then you'll hear from other people like it was a disaster and <laughs> like they never slept at all. And so for me, you know, it's like I'm, you know, up every two hours and I'm bleeding from down there. And I'm also having like, oh goodness, I'm also having like all these strange you know, pains that are popping up and, and then breastfeeding is really painful and you have like sore nipples. And so there's a lot, you know, the first, and then after the t first two weeks, you start getting into the third week and then I started feeling a lot better. The bleeding is subsiding. A lot of my symptoms are going away. Your body is starting to go back to normal. And 
breastfeeding's not hurting as much, and then you start getting a little bit more energy, so you don't want to do anything too crazy. Obviously, you can't even start, well, my doctor recommends not working out or anything until six weeks postpartum. So, you know, I said like last time too, I, I gained 30, well, I gained the same amount of weight last time as I did this time, so I gained 35 pounds. And that was what my doctor minimum said that I had to gain. That was kind of naturally what I ended up gaining. But online, you know, being online, people were saying like, wow, you've gotten so fat. And I've gotten a little bit of that this time, but more so last time. And um, I felt really stressed about that because I, you know, I felt like, um, I wanted to make sure that I was going to lose the baby weight and I felt pressured about that a little bit. Pressured is a better word. Not so much stress, but just, yeah, pressured, you know, pr which can turn into stress. And, and I don't, I think that was unnecessary. Oh, here we go. That was completely unnecessary. Um, you, know, you can't even start exercising for six weeks postpartum anyway. So I feel like, you know, just eat healthy, make sure you feel like you're in a good state of mind, that you're getting as much sleep as you possibly can and not feeling pressured, not feeling those outside pressures. I slept again and I was fitting back into my clothes eventually and like all that fell into place. But I think I didn't need to stress about it, you know, and I did a little bit and I kind of, I look back and I don't regret so much, you know, but I just, I didn't want to do that this time. So, um, so anyway, I'm going to introduce you. Hi, pumpkin. <laughs> this is Isaiah Ray Talbot. Um, Isaiah, what, that was, it was between Oliver and Isaiah for Oliver, and then Oliver was named to Old Pumpkin. Oliver was named after Byron's middle name. It's Byron Oliver Talbot. So we decided to go with Isaiah this time because those were our two favorite names. And then Ray is after Byron's dad. Oliver Lee Talbot, Lee is after my dad's middle name, and Ray is after Byron's dad's middle name. So those, that's where we came up with the names. And he's got a lot of hair. Oliver had a lot of hair, but Isaiah has a ton of hair. And I just sit and stare at him. He was born July 6th. And he was born six pounds, 14 ounces. Oliver has been great with Isaiah. His demeanor has been so sweet and just wanting to like snuggle him and kiss him. And, um, you know, he's just had nothing but super sweet big brother, you know, attitude, which has been great. He's had a few with us. He's had a few like attention seeking things, a few tantrums here and there that you can tell he's, you know, adjusting to we all are adjusting right to this new situation and having two kids now and moving into a new house and a lot's going on so there's been a little bit but overall he's been really really good and he's been really really sweet with isaiah the demeanor his demeanor has been super sweet so anyway he's sleeping so um i will definitely do more like baby updates baby favorites some of my routine and you know organizing the new house and getting that all in order and so that's going to be kind of the progression of my channel for the next few months but i am taking it easy and trying not to um you know overexert myself and just really enjoy the moment and enjoy isaiah and oliver and try to stay you know um stress-free as much as possible but yeah i'm going to continue to film as usual <laughs> he's so cute are you tired He's like in REM sleep. I can see his eyes. Um, so anyway, that was my labor and delivery story. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.